So my name is Anvila. Uh, I'm one of the beta testers for Octane Render for Blender. Uh, me and other three guys, we've been doing the beta testing for a period of about one month and a half before they was uh, before it was released uh, publicly. Uh, so for the people that uh, don't know very much about Octane Render, it's a commercial render engine. Um, it's based on GPU. It's only using uh, NVIDIA. So it's using the CUDA libraries to render the images. And uh, now we are going to show you uh, a little bit the pros and the cons about using this engine. And you can have a better idea about what's going on with, with this engine. So let me change the, the slide. So this is what I just explained. Uh, What's Octane Render? Basically, uh, I'm going to show you what kind of quality you can get with with Octane Render. Um, it's similar to Cycles, but it was previous Cycles. Uh, also, Brett was working for uh, Octane Render before he started to work in in Cycles. So he kind of like learned very much things from his period working in in Octane Render before he started the project for Cycles. So. Yeah, let's say that Octane Render was one of the first GPU rendering engines commercially uh, popular. And then we have these days much more options. But uh, I want to show you some quality that you can get with Octane Render. So as you can see, uh, the main goal of Octane Render is try to accomplish uh, photorealistic images. You cannot use Octane Render to create cartoon images, or it's not good to create or generate cartoon or other style of rendering images. But its, it's main goal is to, to have this kind of quality images. Was there was there any live action cut in there? No, this is all 3D. All 3D. Do you know what the average render times are on something like that? I think if you go to the comments from this video, for example, uh, I think maybe the author of this video can explain more what kind of hardware he used and uh, a little bit more about the details about render times and these kind of things. You know. But he has many, many videos about um, Octane Render videos like this, like cards and other stuff. It's just one example, but he has many other nice videos like this. What's been your experience with the render times of Octane compared to other? Yeah, I'm going to explain now in a moment. Basically, I want to uh, compare cycles with Octane so the people can can see the difference and the pros and the cons. So this is what I want to talk. What's the difference? Oh, Why? Well, yeah. I think we're backed off of screen sharing somehow. Um, this all? We can see it. Yeah, we we can, can see, see my screen. Can see it? Okay. Yep, you're good. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. So uh, yeah, I'm going to show you briefly some of the features from Optin and from uh, Cycle, so you can compare and you can decide what fits best for for you. In any case, uh, this is also very much my point of view in some of the features. I've been working with both, both engines. I've been working with Octane for maybe three or four years. Mm -hmm. So I have very much experience with, with Octane. I've been working on a feature film using Octane. We render about 1,100 visual effects with Octane render. Mm -hmm. And it was like very, very pleasant. So we couldn't achieve this kind of quality and speed with, with cycles, at least at that time. These days is getting better cycles. But I think you have to find the, you have to use the right tool for the right work. And now I'm going to show you what's the, the differences between Octane and, and Blender. So here's the pros and here's the pros for, for Blender. Basically, in my opinion, uh, is Octane Render is way faster than, than Cycles, especially in some problematic uh, scenes like interiors and these kind of things. Uh, also in glass, caustics, these kind of things. 
usually the, the speed that you can get with open render is, is far better. It gets a cleaner image in less time. That's, that's one of the benefits. Uh, the next thing is better quality. Uh, <laughs> if you get better, much faster speed and better quality, for me, that's it's a hit deal. Pretty awesome. Sorry? And I, I know where this is going. This is going to be everything on the side. This one's going to be free, and this one's going to be as a price. Uh, no, no. <laughs> You're going to be surprised, I think. <laughs> I try to be uh, honest, you know, and not talk only about talking <laughs> render. And in fact, you'll see that there is also many problems with talking rendering from production point of view. And maybe for some productions, you will need to use Blender if you want to achieve. What would you say the percentage is option versus Blender which render are using? Uh, in what particular? Like, in just in general, what would you say your usage? Is it like 75, 25? In my, in my case? or yeah. Well, these days I don't do very much rendering. I'm doing more real time. Yeah. But before, I will use maybe 90% of the render. These days, I may not use so much because uh, Blender has very, very nice uh, features. Mm -hmm. Like, big freestyle that you cannot have in, in Octane. I'm going to show you in a moment. But Blender and Cycles is getting there very, very fast. And the progress that is happening in Cycles is not happening in Octane at the same pace. Even they have a, a bigger team, and they have much developers working for them. The pace in Cycles is like, like fast. It's very, very fast. So the next thing, uh, you have more render algorithms. Uh, in cycles, you have direct light. This is like not calculating so many bounces of the light. Then we have path trace as well in cycles, but we don't have PMC. Uh, PMC is a, an algorithm for rendering to sort out uh, problematic scenes, like for example, in the interiors, or for example, when there is like a glass or caustic that usually in, in render engines, it takes very much time to refine a half a a clear image. With PMC, you get usually much cleaner image in less time. Uh, also, for example, uh, if you use uh, mesh lights, and these mesh lights are quite small, and you need to light uh, on a scene with these small li uh, mesh lights, uh, PMC is working much better than path rays or direct light, for sure. So basically, you have more flexibility, and also the settings, um, in my opinion, is uh, smart, more flexible, even if you use path rays also in cycles. You have uh, a little bit of more settings to, to play around with this. So cycles is right now only uh, direct light and path rays. Also, there is some builds, and there is uh, some works on the having cycles working with bidirectional path tracing. That can be something similar to the PMC. So you can have, like, scenes with caustics and glass much cleaner, much faster. So uh, it's going to be very beneficial in in the future for cycles. But right now, we only have these two in cycles and some kind of limited. So uh, spectral rendering, this is also based on, on caustics. When you, for, for example, when you try to uh, fake glass, or try to get, have uh, some glass material in your scenes. Uh, when the light goes through the glass, and you can see like the spectrum of the light, usually in cycles, you only have RGB. So the way that it's casting the, the light through the glass and spraying the, the light is kind of like RGB, basically. With the spectral rendering, it's more similar to how the light behaves in real world. Mm -hmm. So you have more variety, more re wide range of, of colors when it's spreading the, the light and it's splitting the light source. So basically, for glass, the quality is, is far, far better using a spectral rendering. Also, I think in cycles, uh, to have a spectral rendering is only one line of code. So they could do this very, very quickly just by adding one line of code. And I think uh, they plan to do this uh, when they have the bidirectional path tracing working. But right now, it's like in testing. OK. Uh, better sky texture, in my opinion. Um, the sky texture that you can use 
to light and scene is is much better in, in Octane Render. The quality looks more realistic. Light portals, we don't have this in cycles. Basically, uh, if you're trying to light up a, a room, for example, in your scene, uh, if you have a light outside of the of the room and it has a glass, for example, it's very hard for the lights to penetrate the glass and light up the scene, the light up the room. So it's very time consuming for a render engine to calculate all the bounces inside of the of the room. So with light portals, you can assign these materials, for example, through the glass. So it tells, okay, I want to uh, concentrate more photons or more calculations in this glass. So it cleans up the image much, much faster, especially for interiors. It's, it's very, very powerful, this tool. Uh, this is the last feature that I consider one of the benefits of having uh, Octane Render. We have some post-production effects on cycles. Basically, it's called film looks, I think. So uh, basically, they just copy it directly from Octane, <laughs> as many other features. But basically, it's very cool because you don't have to go to the node editor or to the compositor to uh, just change the look so you can control the curves, and you can try to uh, make it match like real film uh, looks, like a Kodak look or Fuji film, this kind of looks. Uh, this is very similar to the ones that we have in Cycles. As I said, they copied Octane. But uh, the difference is that in Octane, you can have also some glare effects on, on the camera without using uh, post-production nodes. But basically, you can adjust the bloom. You can adjust the glare. You can adjust um, the, uh, some other uh, light effects that you can get in, in post-production directly on, on the viewport. So let's go to the cycles one. This is what Octane doesn't have. Uh, cycles is very, very good in calculating motion blur. With motion blur, you need this for visual effects, for sure. You have all kind of motion blur uh, options in cycles. You can have camera blur. That's when an object is static and the camera is like moving. Uh, object blur is when the camera is static and the object is, is moving. The formation is when an object is like deforming, so you can have blur in, in that particular situation. And vector blur is a post-production node that you can use. Uh, in Octane, for Blender, you only have camera blur. You don't have object deformation or, or vector blur directly. Uh, they are planning to do this, and they have it working in Octane 2.0, but Octane for Blender is based on 1.5, so we don't have these features in Octane for Blender. Uh, next, hair rendering. Uh, we cannot render hair on Octane, as far as I know. Uh, more nodes, more com more flexibility. In cycles, you have like a wide variety of nodes, and you can you can uh, put nodes together in a way that you can create something completely different that it was meant to be done. With that, you have much much more variety to to play around with with the nodes, and you can have very very cool effects. In in Open, you have also nodes but not so many, so you are a little bit more limited in the way that you can generate new ways to calculate um, the lights and the, and the looks. I was just talking to Thomas this last week in developer chat. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely pressing him again on um, templates for nodes, especially for material templates mm -hmm. and other templates, so you can basically take a, uh, a preset and um, very rapidly um, duplicate the node with slight variations among materials and things of that sort. So he's definitely interested in doing that. I think that's going to really increase the flexibility of nodes and really increase the workflow. Yeah, especially for the for the new users, it will be much better to have some kind of templates for materials right. and textures and also these kind of nodes. So I think in the future, Blender will need to have these kind of yeah. uh, libraries or presets. So Thomas Stingis was definitely um, very clear, and he had his own desire to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. So it's a very promising feature. Okay, forward. <laughs> so uh, next one, uh, more render passes. The integration of cycles with the compositor editor is very, very powerful. You have many passes that you can do 
you can even explain like the diffuse, the glossy, the integrate direct, this kind of thing. So uh, you have some passes in Optin, but they are very limited. It's not as powerful as the render passes that you can have in, in Cycle. So that's a very, very strong point. Uh, more types of lights. Basically, Optin render is using a sky textures to light up your scene, or you can use mesh lights. That's it, basically. Uh, on cycles, you also have mesh lights, and you can also light up the scene with a sky texture or ADL or ECRI. But also, you can use the normal lights to position in the way you want and have the look that you want. So again, more flexibility in this side. Did you say Octane can take HDRI? Cannot. You can have. Yeah, can Octane. Yeah. Um, uh, it's sky textures. You can call it sky, sky textures. Well, say any HDRI has a sky texture, essentially. Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah. So you can use an IDL or a TNI okay. and the mesh lights. That's the only way to light up in, in Octane. Uh, also, rendering. Uh, right now, uh, you can have surface scattering in nothing, same as in cycles, but there's no way, as far as I know, to render fire, smoke, and this kind of effects that it's very used in, in visual effects, for example. So, again, another strong point. And I think they're working for 2.0 for these solar options, but we'll see. Yeah, just quick on, on you. Word faster is sort of ambiguous. Let's say you took the same scene and say something, you know, 150,000 polygons, you know, with 4K textures or something. What's what's the difference between the octane render and the and the? Well, it depends very much of the materials as well, but usually the quality and the speed is faster than the octane render. But obviously, if you need more flexibility to do post production, passing, uh, Wait, is it like two times faster, ten times faster? No, let's say one times. Depends. Depends very much of the scene. Uh, yeah. The uh, other mention that I wanted to tell is the, the bake rendering. Uh, this is also very beneficial. Uh, we don't have any bake rendering in, in Optane. So, I think it's it's very very well done this this feature for Blender. So it's basically uh, once you have the render, you can save all the textures as it looks into a into a different texture, and you can use that texture applied into the model that you already have, so you don't have to render again. So for example, if you have like an static um, a scene like a room, for example, you can just render the room how it looks, how it lights uh, the the room itself. And then once you do the bake, you can do the camera movement wherever you want, and you don't have to render again. So it's like a huge time saving because you just need to render once. Yeah, as long as your shadows don't interact with anything in the room other than the floor, you just bake the whole room and not the floor, and you just re-render the floor and the objects, and the shadow interact with the floor. So you don't have to keep rendering something you've already rendered. Very popular for gaming. Yeah, also and for gaming. Yeah. So yeah, it's very, very powerful tool. Not only for rendering, but also for real time. It's an uh, awesome tool. Uh, the other thing is not in here, but I want to mention as well is the freestyle. You can have uh, freestyle in 2.72 coming on pretty soon. So it opens a new variety of render looks that you can have. So basically, that's it. As I said, uh, I try to be neutral in creating this, this chart from my opinion, the pros and the cons. And then it's up to you to choose uh, what tool it fits best for for your production. How much is Octane for Yeah, I'm going to talk about <laughs> the pricing as well in in a moment. So uh, yeah, now I'm going to jump in to show you how it works. Let me work a little bit in here. So basically, uh, for Octane, you need two softwares. You need uh, a server, because one of the problems with Octane is that uh, because it's a commercial software and Blender is TPL based, um, they kind of like try to find a way to make it work. So they, they find a way, and it's by using a, another program to intercept the, 
the signals or the settings that you want to use in Blender and rendering a commercial software like Octane. So I think they kind of open the, the way for commercial applications to use these kind of methods. So you can avoid problems with the GPL license. So uh, basically, once you you buy the licenses, you get an Octane server and a Blender for Octane. This is a specific version for Blender, so they have to create this custom build all the time. It's a little bit pain in the ass, but <laughs> it's as it is right now. So let's see in, in the future if they can find a way to make it work without having to create a, a special build all the time. So I'm going to install the server. <clears throat> As you can see, it's using 2.70. Uh, the main developer is working in a new version of Blender, for uh, Octane for Blender. So they will update uh, the latest version of this plugin for uh, Blender very, very soon, I suppose. You could have Blender call the Octane binary just from the shell, and that would not violate the GPL. But the thing is, like, you won't have a viewport integration as you have in Cycles, for example. Yeah, real time no, viewport have the, integration. The plugin, when it initializes, start Octane for you. You still have to have two binaries, but it'd be more seamless for the user. But this one, it doesn't use a standalone version of Octane. Octane is integrated inside Blender. Um, so it's like Cycles. It's going to be exactly like Cycles. Uh, so this version of Octane is just right inside of Blender. Blender so yeah. It's so an Octane interface in Blender. Yeah. Right? Um, but the Cycles and Octane uh, interfaces have a special API that they use to integrate directly into the inside the computer's code base. Mm -hmm. So uh, now we have to run the Octane server. Is it linking an Octane library when it does that? Or is that part all done in Python? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Because if you are linked, it's it's your, your, yeah. If you're linked, you're already violating the GPL. No, they, they released the, they, they the released, source code. Uh, it's yeah. You can download the source code of the it, it add-on. Yeah, it's actually been downloaded. People have been downloading. So basically, just install the two applications, and then just open the custom build. Then we have, we have to go to user preferences, add-on, go for. Octane, and there you have. As you can see, in this side of the screen, let's see if I can. <clears throat> okay, we have uh, the settings for Octane. Some of the things that I was explaining, like for example, the kernel, you can have uh, PNC, path trace, direct light. So we have more options. Uh, before you you mess around with this right now. If you go to render mode, it's not rendering in anything because it's asking you to pay for the license, basically. <laughs> so in here, you have to have the license for the, the standalone and for the plugin. Uh, you need both. So you cannot get only opt-in for, for Blender. You also need to get the license for, for the standalone, or else you cannot use it. There is a, a bundles that you can you can get for a better price. Or if you already have the standalone, you can buy just the, the plugin. So I'll talk about this very, very soon. Uh, I'm going to put my login and my password. So I'm going to stop the sharing in a moment. So you don't copy my, my key. Is, is the price the same no matter how many GPUs you have? No. It's, not. no. it's per GPU. Yeah. Nice to have a, a GP, such a granular GPU selection. That's something that Cycles could do. Cycles um, seems to give you a pool of them or individual, but you can't pick like a second and a third, unless anyone knows how to do that. I've never figured it out. I think if, if you have like SLI, the fact that it just seems one and it combines the. So in, in, in Cycles, they recommend. In fact, you should disable SLI because it, oh, it, yeah, for some reason right. it kills the performance 
which I've never really understood why, but, but it seems to get more hype. That makes it challenging if you're a gamer. Yeah, quick. Keep enabling and disabling. <laughs> yeah, so it'll pool GPUs. Yeah. You just have to disable it online to do it. Correct. They use CUDA. CUDA. Um, so um, they've been, so they, they'd like to develop OpenCL support, um, but the big use case for OpenCL is AMD cards. Or, yeah, yeah, I'm putting there. And the okay. compiler for AMD it's okay. just won't compile cycles. It's the compiler from them is they're really struggling with it. So they're working with AMD. Yeah, yeah. So they've been purely for me. Supposedly they just fixed that. They just fixed it. Literally, they were putting out a call yesterday to test the OPCO cycles. So mid, mid to Berlin on a Blender RS as well. It's been running. There's a there's a flag in Blender that allows you to use OpenCL and Intel as well. So like they're the integrated GPUs that are in all our processors these days, which is nice. It means you're only using half your computer if you're just using CPU, right? Okay. So, so as you can see now, uh, it's asking you for for the key. Just click activate. So now it's activated. But Octane does use SLI, right? Or does not? SLR or SLI? Uh, SLI where you went the... uh, Usually when you do a GPU rendering, it's better to disable the SLI. So as you can see, now we can render on the viewport. We can have real time. So it's pretty much like working in cycles. Uh, you can turn on one or one GPU or another one. I have two GPUs. I can do both, and you can subdivide in real time or duplicate. So it's pretty much like cycles. Uh, I'm going to show you some options here. So in this one, as you can see, we have uh, Octane nodes. So basically, it's like the cycles, but for Octane. Let's do something very quickly. So this is the cycle node. We can just cut this, the leaf. <laughs> it's not working in if you plug a cycles node into an octane node, so you have to use the ones for octane. So as you can see, you have for example a glossy. For Octane, which is plug it. So this, and there you have. So you can control the roughness or the, the specularity. You can also create some kind of like chromatic effects or whatever you want. And you can also plug. BAM nodes, normal maps. So the main benefit is uh, the quality of, of the materials that you can use in, in Octane is, in my is, opinion, better. Does Octane support displacement? Yeah. But I think the displacement is more better uh, integrated in the next version of Octane. So in this one, we don't really have like a displacement per, per material, as far as I know. You have the BAM map and the normal map, basically. So uh, now that you see how you can set up the materials, it's just 
very briefly, I just show you how to plug this. It's very similar to the way that you can use it in, in cycles. So I want to show you some of the options that I was mentioning you before. So uh, as I said, you can choose different kernels. So you can jump into PMC if you want to use like glass or other kind of text. The other option is um, a camera mode. As I said, you can also have some post-production effects on the camera mode. You need the okay. Yeah. This uh, Octane Post Processor that oh, you can nice. see in here. Let me. In here, you can enable. And you can put more bloom or glare. This is not the best scene to, to show these options, but it's quite customizable. And, and it's very nice to, to play a, around with these settings on the viewport without having to do any post-production. So you can do vignetting as well. You can change saturation or. Pretty much like a real camera. Is there any way you could turn on screen sharing again? Uh, we just see the projection. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Can you see now? Yeah, we can see it. Thank you. OK. So uh, yeah, then the, the film presets, as you can see, you can also change all these presets. So you'll see that you have this in, in cycles, but this was first in, in Octane. So one of these things. They copied basically from Octane. So um, I'm sure they were inspired by the concept, right? <laughs> let's say, yeah. Yes. OK, it's a weird way to say. <laughs> uh, another good thing in Octane, it's a little bit confusing, is that you can also tell how do you want the scene to be calculated. You can have in here different options, and it's mm -hmm. called global scatter. Uh, movable, reshape. So this is the way that you want, how do you tell the Octane to, to calculate the scene? For example, if the objects are moving or are more static, so you can save some memory and some performance by setting up each individual object uh, to be calculated in a, in a particular way. You can do it. So you have to assign properties to the object itself. That's yeah, you can do it globally, like in in this option, it's for global, or you can set up uh, individually per object. So you can fine tune in a little bit more and get a better performance. So yeah, basically, I'm going to show you the last thing is the passes, the render passes. If you go to info channel, you can also see the, the passes that you can have. Normal. Our frame. <clears throat> but again, it's not as good as, as cycles because in cycles you can basically divide or split the the beauty paths, for example. And if you have diffuse, you can split the diffuse into direct light and direct uh, the glossy same. So it's more flexible in, in cycles than the Is render. Most of the rendering you're doing in production, are you trying to not do a lot of post production processing in the sense of a lot of over compositing? You're trying to just get it out of Octane and that's the way it looks. Well, in Octane, because it looks 
generally better, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. I'm just limited. Usually, I try to get as much as render passes as possible, but because uh, Optin doesn't really provide so many passes, sometimes you just can play with the beauty pass and do some composition, but you don't have as much as flexibility. If it was for me, I will use as many render passes as possible. I will use the the way it's using cycles and it's right. dividing like the the diffuse, the glossy, yeah. you know. But but when you're using octane, it's kind of like what you see is what yeah, you get. Yeah, basically, much, right? exactly. So, uh, so does it take you longer to get a setup? Because like you know, typically you don't like half the time three renders don't look good to me. I get to it takes me more time to to set up the the things in in cycles because okay there is more flexibility and for some productions you really need to use the tools provided in cycles render passes and these things but for me it takes me more time to have a nice render in cycles than in octane in octane i just plug a few materials i just adjust the light and pretty much looks pretty good yeah and the render times are very very good in cycles you have to play around more with the notes until you find the right note and the right setting to make it look as you want. So yeah, you have more flexibility, but at the end you also have to spend more time to have the same kind of quality or similar quality. Um, okay, so the last thing I want to show you. Let's see. Okay. Is Alembic. Uh, Someone is uh, familiar with this format? Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is uh, very very used these days, especially for uh, visual effects. You can see all these softwares that you may know. Some of them are using um, Alembic. It's pretty much the standard these days for, for visual effects. So uh, Alembic was developed by Sony Pictures and Lucasfilms. So uh, it's pretty much uh, very well built. Basically, Alembic uh, is kind of like caching um, all the geometries and all the animations into one file, so you don't have to deal with bones and animations that gets broken when you export from one software to another. So it condenses everything into one file. You can condense uh, materials and particles, simulations, and it looks exactly the same from one application to another. So that usually didn't happen before. It's going to be a big file. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's not. Uh, for example, if you have a file with the skins with uh, with bones, the file size is very small because it's calculated yeah. per file. Right. But in here is it's it's exactly it's, every exactly. Yeah. So it is huge files. You know, uh, the good thing in in Optane for Blender is that you can you can export in Alembic. So usually. You cannot export in Alembic in Blender, but with Optin for Blender, you are allowed to create uh, Alembic files, and you can open these files in any of these applications. So I'm going to do a very, very quick example in here, so you can see how to export Alembic. Yep. Can you like, import Alembic from like Maya and stuff as well? You can export from Blender, but you cannot import from Blender. Okay. But if you export it from Maya, could you bring your Olympic file into, oh, you can't bring it in. You, you can only export at this point. Uh -huh. Basically, because that's what they need in Octane. They said, OK, we need to export uh, for all these applications, but also for Octane Render, as you can see in the bottom. So uh, they said, well, we don't really need to import anything back to Blender, you know? So, sorry? If you import it, it would be Yeah, it's it's the same format. The only thing is, like, this is developed by Octane, and they don't really mind about the importing because they are only mind about <laughs> exporting to Octane. So, but you can use exporter for for send uh, your scene to all these applications. So, in case that you buy the the software, the Octane for Blender, uh, it's good that you also have this extra tool that in production is is very used and very useful. So, is that how you typically get? files into the standalone version of Octane? No, you, usually you can export as an OBJs and you can import the OBJs, or you can use an X script that is doing this for you. But yeah, but if you have fake animations, like deforming characters. Yeah, exactly. Like that, you they are going to use the Alembic for, 
for animations, especially because, as I said, um, they are working in 2.0 and Octane render for 2.0, and Blender Octane for Blender is 1.5. So there is some features that, for example, deformation uh, blur and motion blur for objects. These kind of things are not working yet, but it's going to be working in the next release for Octane for Blender 2.0. So that's why they created this this format so they can exchange the information between the, the main engine and, and Octane for Blender. So I'm going to show you in here, there is an option called Export Alembic. And basically, it allows you to, to export your animations and everything. Let me do something very quickly. Okay, so we have a queue. So let's export the simulation. <coughs> Is each GPU double the render? Or it's almost doubling the render time or Cutting splitting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, there is a point that is not longer doubling the, the or dividing the, the render time. time. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if the scenes are more and more complex, uh, it's getting slower and slower. Is it like a good spot, like maybe four or something like that, kind of the ideal? Depends on the GPU as well, but yeah. in general, the performance drop, I think, doesn't really work. I mean, I will use CPU all the time. In fact, I try to avoid using CPU rendering everything, every time. It's, it's just so slow in comparison with GPU. No, 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 I'm saying for every time you add a GPU, let's say if you have four GPUs and then you go to a fifth, is that kind of like, well, it's not really worth having a fifth because you're only getting like there is, 0 0.02%. But the thing is like there is uh, so many things that you have to consider because, for example, also the memory, if you have, for example, four graphic cards that has three gigabytes of RAM, and you put the fifth one that has one and a half, it's going to drop all your four cards of three gigabytes so to 1.5. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's one thing. The other thing is like, uh, obviously, you are going to have a, a speed boost on this, but instead of like just multiply by the <laughs> power of the card itself, right. it's maybe going to have like 90%, which is still very good, you know, but yeah. it's not going to have like 100% of just right. plugging on one new graphic card and having the full performance, you right, know, right. but it's still very good. Okay, so now we have click export Alembic, click animation, take in all the, the frames. So we don't really mind about the, the frames itself. We mind about the ABC file. This is the Alembic file. So now I'm going to open a new software, one from this list. I'm going to use Clarice IFX. I love this software. Mm -hmm. And let's import the scene. So we go to the desktop, export, Alembic, and there it is. So now you can have your animations with all the same settings as you've had in Blender. So you avoid exporting problems, which is usually a very, very problematic scenario when you don't use Alembic. <laughs> When you, you use it, take this like you're using Octane standalone, you would take that file. And yeah, yeah exactly. Out. You can use pretty much this file. But the, but the, the, the textures get assigned to the vertexes? In the latest the, version of Alembic, you get everything. You get materials, textures, uh, particles, you get pretty much everything. It's getting better and better, uh -huh. but pretty much this is the standard. And I'm very happy that finally we have a, 
a format that just exports everything I don't it. without any problem. <laughs> because usually, when you go, for example, from Softimage to Blender yes. using FBX or Maya, it's, it, never it never works, exactly. <laughs> so that's the demo for Alembic. Uh, let me show you the prices. Uh, yeah, pretty much, as I said, you need the Octane Blender plugin and also the standalone, as it says in here. Uh, just the plugin, it, it costs $131 approximately, and the standalone is $395, so you can get the bundle for about $500. And this is the price for three pack licenses, five pack, ten pack. So. But that's that's per GPU, so like yeah, uh, three pack is really oh no no that's not per GPU that's per uh, per computer per station per station yeah so you can have as many GPUs as you want yeah for example in my computer right now I'm using two GPUs uh -huh. but I only have one license Got so it. you can plug as many as you want uh, finally. If you have any questions or not, so if you wanted to, could you just buy the plugin for Blender on one machine and have the octane render on a different machine? I think it's possible because in here you can set the IP server address. That's what you're talking about? Yeah, with that killer video. Yeah. This is using the, the local IP, but I think if you are in a network and you have a the Standalone license in another computer. I think you just need to change the, the IP address in there, and it will read the. Yeah, you probably wouldn't see. You wouldn't see the interface working in real time on the station. Oh no, you will see you would, wherever you like, run it. Being. So you want like a 10 gig interface to that other machine? It's it's something that. fast, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Depends on your your network, but I think it shouldn't be a problem. Does Olympic include uh, light lighting? Yeah, but obviously uh, depends on the host platform because obviously from one render engine to another, it may be completely different the results that you get. So right. usually you use Alembic to export animations, uh, simulations, and materials. So if you're saying materials, it's a memory material or a V-ray material. Exactly. Not, it's not going to translate. You're going to have to use base DPUs like the old school. Yeah, your old school shaders, like your your traditional shaders, if there's algorithms. Yeah, exactly, and also it's a little <laughs> bit pointless to also uh, export materials and lighting because, for example, uh, if you're in Blender and you want to use Arnold render, mm -hmm. uh, obviously you're going to you want to use the Arnold lighting and the sure. Arnold materials, or else what's the point, you know, right. to have the same look on as in, in Blender? Yeah, so you can get the the good profit of having. These render engines also working. So I so think so to, to use Octa, let's say you're you you're gonna jump from you know package to package, but you want Octane to be your your render and you're gonna take everything through lending. You would just keep all like your your typical shaders and then export all that stuff and then you could just have one standard uh, render like like on chain, but you can use whatever application you want. Yeah, exactly. Basically, you just as I showed you, uh, I was using Blender to generate that simple scene, but then you can just use the the LMB file with any of the of these softwares. But even lights, too, there's some lights like like with the spots. Kind of you can have the position, but obviously the look is going to be completely different from one to uh, to another. And software. when you can adjust those in Octane. Yeah. And let's say, for example, you have a light moving, you know, uh -huh. so you are going to have the position of the light, right. but obviously how the light is get, getting calculated in Octane is going to be different than how it's getting calculated in Arnold, for right. example. Sure. Sure. But that's a good thing, because that's why you, you are allowed to use all these so engines. The type of light, like you said that Octane only, only takes two types, two types of lights, right? It's the sky, the sky, mm -hmm. and your, your mesh lights, or whatever they're called. Yeah, well, does, does it convert the I don't know how it exports the, the lights. I don't know if it exports also the light types. So I don't know if it's calculated just the position, and it treats that position as a point light or as a mesh light. And so whatever it is, you have, to re, you have to redo your parameters in Octane. So I mean, it's not worth it. Like, like hey, I set up a scene in Maya, I lit it. 
Mm -hmm. You just have to rewrite it in Octane. Yeah, exactly. Right. Pretty much, you have to adjust the, the materials and the lighting in the final platform that you're going to render. Right. So basically, you just use for compositing the animation. It's really just to get geometry and textures. In Pretty much, scene. yeah. Mm -hmm. How much is a Uh Lembic is free. It's open source. Oh, okay. So uh, mm -hmm. we are going to have a Lembic uh, in Blender as well, I suppose, in the next months, uh, because they are trying to have uh, a Lembic import and export inside Blender. This is right now the only option that you have to work with a Lembic. For, from Blender, but I think in, in a few months there will be a, an export and import uh, a script for free for Blender. Is a uh, the Akin standalone? Is it is it quicker or faster or? It's almost the same as exactly. The same. Yeah, exactly. and the settings is pretty much the same. Maybe mm -hmm. with a different obviously it's a different interface, but pretty much you have the same settings as I show you in in. Blender, yeah, and also the nodes also is the same. You can also use nodes. Uh -huh. Pretty much is the same. Got it. Okay, so that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome.